Well, here it is, hump day. Midweek, mid-May. No better time to dig into the back of the KTVB archive to see what was happening on this day, May 17th. I don't know, say 20 years ago? I don't know. How about we just pull some random tape off the shelf, like, say, 23 years ago today? It was a day, as John Miller found out in today's 208 redial, that was for the birds. <laughs> So it's Reggie. Yep, Reg. These are your veggies. Yep, Reg the veg. And you never know what yep. you'll find at Reggie's Veggies, perhaps even oh St. Nick shopping in his off season in a white Cadillac, no less. But here's the breaking bird story. Two feathered fiends, it looks like. Yeah. So I guess uh, this whole story started really with somebody dinging the back of your truck and putting a hole in your bumper. Yep, made a, I guess, a perfect home for <laughs> someone else. Which would seem pretty stupid, even for a couple of starlings building a nest in a truck bumper. So you've become like the mobile home yep. driver. A mobile home for birds. What do you call them? You got Fred and Ethel. Harold and Maude. Bonnie and Clyde. Partners in crime anyway. Exactly. <laughs> because every time Reggie goes for more veggies, there's a sign of trouble. Fruit on the ground, birds on a wire, waiting for a shot to fly in and make their play. And bam, the grape escape. Clean getaway. Yep. No doubt sharing the fruits of their labor with their bumper crop of babies. They've got the whole thing figured out. Yeah, they've got the perfect setup. Like I said, you never know what you're gonna find at Reggie's Veggies. Yo, Santa! Two of the world's smartest starlings. Can't catch them. That's why the folks at Reggie's Veggies have figured out if you can't beat them, feed them. You got it. <laughs> John Miller, Idaho's News Channel 7. So Reggie's Veggies, who apparently started his business back in 1995 with a table full of cherries and two umbrellas, is still selling fruits and veggies. And this time of year, lots of berries. Six days a week on the corner of you stick and coal roads in Boise. You know what else is still happening? Every time we run one of these Miller stories, we get messages asking about John Miller. We've been getting them for years. Where's John Miller? Where did he go? What's he up to these days? Whatever happened to John Miller? Can he come back? Well, John left KTVB in 2002 and is now in Kansas City, Missouri by way of Seattle and Phoenix. And he's been in KC since 2007. He started his own production company there after being a stay-at-home dad to twins for a few years. Some of you may remember John actually came back to Boise in 2010 for a two-week stint to tell more Idaho life stories. And, well, we caught up with him today to hear a few of his. Standing in a turkey farm in duck boots, 1993, my earliest memory of Idaho life shortly after I'd moved here from my old job in Iowa, a life journey I initially tried to measure with a ruler. That's about five inches on your average Rand McNally. Keep going, keep going. So I jumped right in, hung around, swung around, the camera taped to my arm or one of my many hats. Increasingly suspicious that Idaho life was probably a misnomer. As I grew older, wiser, and slower than the world's fastest wiener dog, who also tried to kill me. Oh, no. Still, the sun always rose like a homemade cannon over a meridian cornfield. The days and years shooting by like pumpkins and squashes and potatoes. And shih tzus on skateboards, the stories often hitting me square between the eyes like one of those potatoes. More paintballs, more people on snowboards. But it's okay, I survived all that, knowing someday the bosses at the Big Seven would call and say, hey John, we wanna revisit some of those old crazy stories you did. There are literally thousands on all these tapes. Can you pick us your 10 favorite? So the other day, my old friend and camera guy, Gary, you remember Gary, I usually dragged him out on Valentine's Day, tried to find him some love. Often kept a running total of how many dates he'd had over periods of time. Hey. We drove across Idaho in an RV all the way to Canada once. And then we got officially kicked out of Canada. And then Canada felt so bad about it, they invited us back a year later and treated us like kings. Nice. That Gary. Well, Canada's still there, and so is Gary, with a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids, one dog, two cats, and the other day, a beautiful idea. Just started throwing them in the copier and sending them to you. And he did send them. All 10 zillion stories, just pick 10. The only problem is most of those old stories are called things like train man and fish carver and fat dog. And while I do remember covering dogs that were friends with birds and covering birds that were friends with cars and covering cars that were covered in pennies, 
it's hard to sort out all the flower ladies <laughs> and funny people <laughs> and cricket infested roads traveled. Oh man, here they come. And I had a feeling the bosses who wanted me to just pick 10 would probably want to put me in a car and a bus and a plane and fly me out to Boise to talk about it. Or these days. Hey, hey, we could just use Zoom. You? I'm doing well, how you doing? Good, man. It's been a while. Okay, so where are you? Like in your house right now, where are you? I'm in the living room. You are in the living room. I, I got kids out on the deck with the dog. There's guys working out front, so yeah. Is everybody out of school already? They uh, graduate high school on Saturday. So my twins are graduating Saturday, so. That's nuts. Yeah. You have yeah. twins graduating high school. Going off to college, Arizona and Arkansas. So, yeah, so <laughs> things are a little bit crazy around the Miller household right now, but um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're surviving. The impact that you had in your nine years here at KTVB is tremendous. You've left us a lot of uh, stories archives to pull from and cull and, and find some good stories and check up on some of these people. We get messages every single time we air those. What is John Miller up to now? Where is John Miller? Why can't he come back? <laughs> well, you know, Brian, um, actually, when I left in 2002, I kind of stole a microphone. So you I mean, did. It, 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 anything's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> so that's amazing. Know, just in case, just in case. I, you know, had my little mementos around that I keep because those were the those were the good days. They were good days, exactly. I mean, you were doing how many four stories a week for nine straight years? Trying to, yeah. There were times when it got a little thin. You know, it was like when it rains, it pours, and stories be coming in all the time, and then it would then it would kind of taper off. So more or less, yeah, four stories a week, and um, you know, but it was great because the viewers were so awesome that they just fed me stuff, and then it was, you know, this kind of. It just it fed itself, so it was it was a great time and and, and, a, and a lot of fun, a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. I, you know, there, there's one thing that I think about all the time, and it, it, uh, I got this email one time. This was like the early days of email, and I I it was a guy, and he said, "Thanks a lot, John Miller. Thanks a lot." I'm like, "Well, well here it goes. Okay, what what now? What's coming? I, I don't want to." He's like, "My wife and I used to stay up till 10, 12 p.m. on the nose. We'd see Rick Lance's first weather, and then we go to bed." But now we stay up till 1036 just to see what you came up with today. And I'm like, oh man, that is really cool. But then it was like always pressure. Give people a reason to stay up to 1035. Definitely tried to. And sometimes I was like, I'm so sorry, guy and your wife laying there in bed who just went, what was that? I'm just thinking about these people laying in bed going, man, that was not worth 25 minutes of lost sleep. So <laughs> we just hope for the best every time we went out the door with the camera. And he usually came back with it. Good to see him today, by the way, for the first time in 13 years. So there's your answer, Beth, Carl, Joe, Liz, Stephanie, Tina, Tyson, and everyone else who wanted to know whatever happened to John Miller. Just nine years here, but he left quite the impression on the about-to-be 70-year-old KTVB and, of course, our viewers.